The one thing I forgot to do because I got too excited was uh, drain it. Oops. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, I'm here today with a treat especial. I got a Yale forklift that we are going to get heavily involved with. As we're going to find out, this is a machine that has been uh, neglected fairly heavily over the years. This unit will be a prime example of why routine maintenance is necessary. They came in for a leaking axle, uh, which is not out of the ordinary, but when we get to tearing this apart, we find out that this has been leaking for quite some time and has actually gotten so bad that it presented itself as a very real fire hazard. And now that we have the mast off, we can get started on taking this apart. It might just be me, but I think forklifts look goofy with the mass taken off. Right here, I had to use my 15 inch breaker bar just to get these nuts broke loose. So I have done this type of a job before in a very similar unit and I was trying to do it a little differently this time thinking I was going to save some time. I ended up making a little bit more work for myself. I uh, kind of forgot that the entire electric motor hangs off the back of the uh, differential but I'll find that out here in a minute. And to get to this point I did skip over a couple things. I didn't show you taking the brake lines off or taking the brake cables out. Um, I didn't show you taking all the bolts off to get the axle loose. It's basically the same thing on both sides. And one of the reasons I'm kind of hand shimmying this out is it's a very tight fit in between the frame. And sometimes pulling out with the forklift is too coarse of a movement. And you can make it fall off the forks. And if that axle were to fall off the forks, you could damage parts. I had a teacher one time tell me that there's no mistakes, just happy accidents, and this actually happened to be one. So this piece that I'm removing is a lot of times referred to as a third member. Um, in this case, this is a little more involved. It's a third member with a transmission in it. Not that it shifts gears, but that it's transferring power from one plane to another. And I'll have this third member out on the floor here in a little bit to show you. Glorious. I'll probably clean this out as best I can. Here's one perk about shop work is you can actually clean it with a power washer versus in the field you have cans of brake clean. I gotta seal this part, so I gotta take these off. I wanna make sure I put them on the right way. I gotta put it back together, so I made a mark on either side. That'll be unique just to it. So, that way I put it back together the right way. This would be a downside of working on axles. Uh, they do move and articulate quite a bit. So unless you have a fixture specifically made for this, hard to work on. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's all that keeps it from leaking between the sections is that little O-ring, uh, one on each side. So here's the section that's the, uh, what I call the third member slash transfer case. So down here, you'll see the ring and pinion, and that would normally be your third member. And as we flip around, you'll see the input shaft from the electric motor, and you'll notice that it is not directly in line with the um, ring and pinion on the other side. That's how you know inside that case that it transfers from one plane back to another. Surface prepped, anaerobic on, ready to go back together. A little mechanic fun. Add five to nine, the answer is two. What am I? And if you think you know, feel free to comment down below. Okay, this ended up being a fairly involved project. Had to uh, clean out the motor and uh, get that put back on here because what the failure was is the uh, nose cone seal, the seals on that shaft, it is in the end of the housing for the electric motor and it basically leaked the oil out of here into the motor and I'll put some pictures on the screen here for you. Um, so I had to clean all that out first, basically rebuild the motor, uh, new brushes, clean the windings out. That fan was broken and um, had to put the new fan on. So now we'll put the cover back on the electric motor. And ended up cleaning these bearings out and repacking them. Nope. So here's the uh, hold downs. We gotta stick the brushes in there. You can easily do this stuff with your finger by like using the pick to hold it up and out of the way and get the new brushes stuck back down inside there. The old brushes are you can see how far this sticks out here. That sticks out quite far. The originals were, they were about that long right there. So they were fairly wore out because this lead actually goes down inside the brush here. So I'll pull this up here. Drop that in. And the spring keeps pressure on it. And then I roll this right here. Stick it in. And there we go. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you aren't already, uh, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you like what you see, uh, hit that like button for me. And if you have any commentary for me, uh, feel free to leave them below. Always trying to improve these videos, uh, make it more enjoyable for you. I certainly do have fun doing this, and I hope you guys are enjoying it just the same. And if you didn't catch what I said there, uh, my wife came up with the idea that uh, we need to feature our service writer, Shelby, in a video. So I was brainstorming ideas, and I came up with maybe racing to see who can put lug nuts on a wheel faster. If this is something you'd like to see, or if you have any other ideas, you know what to do. Put them down in the comments below. And you remember earlier on, I said there was a silver lining to this story.
Now coming up here in a moment, we'll see the second most dangerous thing about this situation is that uh, in addition to all the oil and dirt that's inside the motor, one of the wires on the motor was damaged in a way that it still worked. And basically that can cause high resistance and with high resistance comes high heat. And with enough heat, oil, dirt, and the right combination, it's very possible this forklift could have burnt to the ground. I'm gonna do a little end chassis splice here with this wire that, this wire got basically pulled out of here. And what we wanna do, start out with a nice fresh piece. This other piece was crunched down pretty good. And we'll splice back. Here's my splice in piece that I made. Basically, replacing this section of wire. And what we'll do is we'll splice back an equal amount. We'll just get through the sheathing. We'll have them blended together like that. Double this up. It's got some protection. And we've got these nifty crimpers. Has the heat shrink into it. At least it looked like it did. Yeah, there we go. And right about here, I think we'll call it a day. Now, on the next episode, you're going to see uh, some more hidden gems that we found along the way, uh, some more neglected uh, maintenance, and ultimately ended up being a larger repair than necessary. But for now, we'll call this fixed. Ish.